So there's two organizations. Mm -hmm. That is actually the idea. So Women on Waves, um, the work is really to create awareness about medical abortion, about abortion in general, about the violation of women's rights that are the consequence of uh, illegal and unsafe abortions. Um, and the, the, the work that it started, that's why it's called Women on Waves, it started with a ship, a Dutch ship that goes to countries where abortion is illegal, and there women can go on board and get a uh, medical abortion in international waters, where it's Dutch law, and then we sail back. Um, and so as a result of, that was the first campaigns that we did, and we sailed to Ireland, and Poland, and Portugal, and Spain, and Morocco. Um, and it still exists. Uh, the last campaign that we did was with a drone. Uh, we had an, 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 the abortion drone uh, that was flying pills from Germany, abortion pills from Germany to Poland, because in Poland abortion is, I mean, medical abortion is not available, abortion is very restricted. Um, and so the idea behind that is that it creates visibility uh, of, you know, the reality of abortion, that women have abortions, that they need it. Um, and also that, so that it's an action to, 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 to break the taboo and also to create awareness about medical abortion. Uh, because we think that no matter what laws are in the countries, the moment that women know that they can have an abortion with pills, they're okay because you can find them anywhere, whether it's through the internet or you can buy it in local pharmacies sometimes. But women didn't know about that. And the abortion pill has changed the reality of abortion dramatically. Um, so before it existed, which is now for 20 years, women were dependent on doctors that knew what to do, and even in an illegal context. And these doctors were very expensive or they were not willing to provide it. And with the abortion pill, it's very similar to a miscarriage. So women can take the medicines themselves, have a miscarriage in their own environment. And so it's really empowering. It's really giving women, again, the, um, the power over their own lives. Uh, and to take, they can take their own lives in their own hands again. Uh, women on Web was founded after Women on Wave started getting all these emails from women all over the world. When is the ship going to be here? I need an abortion. And the the ship was was a campaign that we did that we do every few years. It's it's very intense. It doesn't solve the local problem, but it can shed a light on it. Um, and so we said, well, it's a pill. It must be possible to find a way to be able to send it to women. So it, uh, the Women on Web was founded. It facilitates the possibility for women to get access to medical abortions or to local abortion care. So we have for every country, we know what's available. Um, we know sometimes local providers, even where it's illegal. We know what is the names of the pills that women can get. So we try to provide every woman that emails us the proper information that she needs to make a, a good decision about her health. Well, the ship, I mean, in some places, like in Ireland, the, there was the first campaign, there was, we, we couldn't help any woman. In Poland, I think, we sailed out three times and there were five women on board every time we sailed out. In, um, in, po in Portugal, the ship was stopped by warship. It couldn't even, you know, sail into uh, Portugal. But what happened there is that we started their hotline um, and in Portugal, this other medicine was available called Artrotec. And so a lot of women were helped by telling them what, which pharmacy to go, what medicine to buy and how to take it to have a safe abortion. Um, in uh, Morocco, the ship was kicked out immediately <laughs> after it became known that it was there. So it, it really depends. I mean, and in, in Spain, we did a few abortions as well. So the amount of abortions on the ship are relatively few, but with these few... Uh, it's making a statement, it's unapologetic, it's showing women need this, they have the right to it, uh, it's not a shame, it's a medical need, it's an, it's an, and, um, uh, and also we can provide uh, information about contraceptives and sexual education, like all these things are part of the SHIFT campaign. Um, women on Web is receiving around 10,000 emails per month. So there, there we have a help desk in 15 languages that are answering emails every day from women that, you know, any questions. Sometimes it's, it's not only unwanted pregnancies. So sometimes it's also like, you know, people that are afraid to be pregnant. They say, oh, but, you know, the boy, he fumbled me and, you know, I don't know, can I have me become pregnant? Because in a lot of places, there's no sexual education either. Um, and so we try to help women in their own language to get as well informed as they can. And, and, and some of the women, they really need an abortion and um, then we make sure that they can access one.
Women on Waves that actually is very small because it's it's really um, the the actions. It, there's not a large overhead of programs that need to maintain. We do campaigns and programs, and then we look for people that are temporary participating in that. Um, so, uh, and Women on Web has a help desk staff in all these languages, and that is funded by donations. Um, so, some of the donations come from women that are asking for the help because then the, the service asks for a donation, but the women that cannot give a donation, they get the service for free. Uh, so, that's about 20%. Um, and that's a, it's self sustainable. It's a non profit, but it's self sustainable now. So, we try, we have institutional donors, we have private donors, we have, yeah, everything. And the work of these two organizations, they support each other. So, you know, for example, Women Wave is really good in awareness, creating awareness, and, and, and but we don't want to have it one legal entity because the, the work of Women Wave is sometimes more risky legally, and you don't want to, uh, you want you want to keep the service always safe. When we started in 2000, in 1999 already, it's 15, it's 15 years now. Yeah. Uh, the, the medical abortion was just registered in the Netherlands. It was not uh, widely known, it was not very available. And in these 15 years there has been so much research done on the safety of medical abortion uh, that when we started Women on Web, for example, 10 years ago, it was quite controversial also among providers. But we also published research on the outcome of the service and now it's kind of there's no you know, there's no debate anymore on how safe it is, medical abortion. The women can do it themselves. The World Health Organization supports that. Uh, Australia just recently opened the telemedical service. So the controversy and uh, the questions about the safety of medical abortions, they are not there anymore. There's no... So that really changed. I also think that the internet changed things a lot. Uh, there's no so much more. I mean, there's a very lively underground market. M medical abortion, when we started, Met with women on web. It was only produced in some countries. It was not, but now it's kind of produced in India and in China. In in a lot of it's it's really there's a lot of uh, production of these medicines and uh, and they are spreading all over uh, on the world. So it's available. Women just need to know that it's there and they need to know how to use it properly because there's a lot of misinformation there. And I think we really helped also to create that awareness. So. Uh, another work that we did is we supported local organizations to open safe abortion hotlines where women can call and they get information on how to use these medicines for to do a safe abortion. And when we started that, the first time was in 2008 in uh, Ecuador, um, women were really afraid like because you were giving information about something that is illegal in that country. But the first time, so they, you know, they said, oh, we're going to go to jail and that didn't happen. And then it started off a whole movement. So there are safe abortion hotlines now in Argentina and Chile, in Venezuela and Peru. Uh, in Pakistan, Indonesia, Kenya, like all over the world. And this idea that women have the right to that kind of information, that, that, that perspective also changed like dramatically. It's now, people are not afraid anymore to give this time of information to women. I think what also changed is of course the whole world situation. 9-11 um, uh, happened, the war against terrorism. When we started Women Web, we got a lot of requests from women from, from American soldiers that were based in Kuwait, in Iraq, in those places. People that are protesting and, uh, you know, having these banners and, uh, and trying to convince the public with images or whatever, that's very visible. But what we've seen in the United States is that doesn't change the reality to access. Even though there are protesters in front of clinics, what is the problem is the moment that there are judges being appointed to, um, in courts. Uh, so the, the Bush and uh, and and before him, um, um, the other presidents they installed very anti-abortion judges, and now also the Supreme Court has a lot of anti-abortion judges. So what you see in the United States is that where abortion is legal, it has become totally unavailable in some of the states because of the the ju ju judicial system uh, fails to protect women's rights to access abortion. So they make all these. Um, restrictions to clinics, that it's totally impossible to make them um, sustainable, um, and uh, the courts upheld those uh, those uh, policies and, and laws. Uh, I have not enough uh, insight in, in, in how far kind of the, the conservative movement, the anti-abortion movement, is also trying to uh, um, 
to influence these systems. And that's what I mean, that we have to be aware that there's a lot of places where decisions are being made, bureaucratic spaces, but also judicial spaces in courts. Um, and that it's v and that is hidden that it, when there is an influence there, and that is where you have to be very careful um, that you won't be distracted only by what you see on the protesters, but that you have to be very aware that there's also an, an other way that can be used to restrict rights human rights. The, the United States is a big funder of the anti-abortion movement everywhere in the world, also in Europe. Uh, human Life International, they all have um, um, they have offices here in Europe in different places. They are trying to influence policy also in the European Union. Um, so it is a concerted movement uh, and they have tactics and the tactics that have been uh, what you see is that the tactics that were used in the U.S. 10 years ago, they are being applied. Now, you know, um, in the European Union, what they, 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 the tactics are the same. And the, these are tactics that are designed by the American anti-abortion groups. So the tactic there has been to make sure that there are judges being appointed that are anti-abortion. That was the tactic of the anti-abortion movement. And it has been very, very successful. So I would be surprised if that is not the same tactics that they wouldn't use that same tactic here. Mm. Uh, so the, in that sense, it is a concerted um, e effort, uh, and uh, especially in the US, and I know that the US has been exporting its tactics to the EU. Uh, and so um, I think that's happening here as well. I don't have kind of, I don't know how, uh, and, and, and again, I'm not a conspiracy thinker, but uh, it, it, we just know that it, it worked very well in the US. The, the, the difference is that there's, a lot of funding available for that work. There's not so much funding available for the, the, the rights work the other side that we are doing.